Okay, let's let's solve another example on on this. Uh, let's assume that we have a someone that is pulling a slide with two kids on them, and that person is pulling the rope with an angle alpha, which is forty degrees. The mass of the two kids plus the slide is going to be fifty kilograms, and the friction coefficient is, are going to be between the slide and the snow is 0 0.20 for the static and 0 0.15 for the kinetic. And always the, the static friction coefficient is going to be larger than the kinetic because if you recall from your experience, you know that it's always harder to make an object stop moving when you have friction than once it's moving, it's easier to keep it moving. So that's why always the, the static friction coefficient is going to be larger than the kinetic friction coefficient. So let's see uh, what type of motion they have if this person is applying a tension of 100 newtons or if it's applying 140 newtons. So the first thing we need to do uh, with these types of exercises always is draw the free body diagram and once we have the free body diagram we apply Newton's second law and we do a balance of forces and see First of all, we need to know if these forces are large enough to overcome friction, and if they are large enough, let's calculate what's the acceleration. So, first for this small uh, tension, let's go and draw um, the free body diagram. So here we have, uh, let's assume that that's all the mass that we're interested in. That's a point particle, and we have, uh, we will have to define our axis, the x-axis, and the y-axis, so we need to know where it's positive and where it's negative. And we have that this is the tension, T, and this is alpha, which is 40 degrees. We have the weight. And we have friction. And, of course, if this, this person is pulling the sled towards the right, friction is going to go towards the left. Okay, and of course we also have the normal force here. So those are the four forces that we have here. So let's write Newton's equations in the x-axis and the y-axis. We have in the x-axis we have Tx minus Fr is equal to Ma and in the y-axis we have that Ty plus N minus W is equal to zero because we know for sure that there is no acceleration in the y-axis. We don't know if there is acceleration or not in the x-axis. That's something we have to figure out now. We have to find if the tension X is going to be larger or not than the force of friction. So we know that the force of friction is going to be smaller or equal to mu static and so the friction, this is the limit, that's the maximum force of friction when the object, the slide, is not going to be moving, which is mu static times the normal. So we have to find if force of friction is larger, sorry, is smaller or not than this number. If it's equal, then we know that there's going to be motion, but if it's smaller, then we know that force of friction is going to compensate Tx. So Tx, we know that it's it's going to be T cosine alpha. If T is 100 newtons, then what this is 100 times cosine of 40 degrees. And if we you do the number, you see that that's 77 newtons. So that's the force that this adult is doing on the x-axis with the rope. Now, that's the force. Now we have to see if that's larger or smaller than this limit force, which is just mu s n. So, in order to calculate this limit, we need to calculate the normal. In order to calculate the normal, we will get, we'll use this equation here. We will solve for n, which is just mg minus t sine of alpha, and this is 50 kilograms, 9.8, the tension, which is 100, and the sine of 40. And if you do the numbers, you see that it is 85 newtons.
So it happens that the limit, the maximum friction that is going to be between the sledge and the snow is going to be 18.5 newtons while the force, the tension that is doing this adult is smaller than that. So with 100 newton, that adult cannot move the sledge. So answer to uh, part A of the problem is they cannot move. He can, that person cannot move the sledge. Now let's see if with 140 newtons, we can, that person can move the sledge. Let's follow exactly the same steps. The force on the x-axis is going to be 107 newton. Let's calculate now what is the friction. The maximum force of friction is going to be mu static times n. That is, using this expression, remember that the normal is equal to mg minus ty. Because now the tension is different, this maximum friction is going to be also different. And if you do the numbers, you get 60 newtons. So now we know that this adult can move the slide. So let's calculate what's the acceleration in that case. You know that to get the acceleration, we get this expression here. We solve for A and we have that A is equal to Tx minus Fr divided by M. Now, be careful because we have used static coefficient so far and that was because we were dealing with is this adult going to be moving or not? Is the adult going to be doing a larger force than the friction that keeps the sledge at rest or not? But now we know that it's moving so because it's moving now the acceleration we need to there's a acceleration we need to use the kinetic friction coefficient. Tx again is T sine, uh, sorry, cosine of 40 degrees, and this friction we know that is mu n divided by the mass, and that n comes also from, again, from this expression, and now we substitute this into here. This is k, and this is k, and this is k, the kinetic friction coefficient, we know absolutely everything, we just substitute and get the result, which is 0 0.94 meters per second square. So that's the acceleration in the case that they're applying, the adult is applying 140 newtons, there's acceleration. If it's applying only 100 newtons, there's no acceleration, the sledge is at rest and there is no motion though. So when we walk, we use Newton's third law and we use friction in order to move one way. So we push backwards, but it's friction, the one that is pushing up forward. So we are pushing the table backwards and the table is pushing me forward through friction and Newton's third law.